In the development and deployment of event and tracker programs, we have already learned a lot. Some of the major lessons learned include the difference in complexities of data flow between individual data collection and aggregate data collection. Tracking people or commodities is much more complex and a lot more thought needs to go into the design phase. It's also not a process that can be easily transferred, as there may be many different data flows between and even within countries. The diagram shown here is an example tracker data flow for HIV testing and counseling, along with registering HIV positive cases into ART. We can see there are many steps in the workflow of this program, which may be modified individually depending on the context this is being implemented in. We can modify this workflow and only review the portion of the diagram that uses the event model. We can see this is a much simpler workflow. It is generally the case that the event model is much easier to manage, implement, and scale up over time when compared to the tracker model, as both the workflow and general complexity are lessened when using the event model. Event and tracker programs are a major area of focus of the University of Oslo's development teams. New features are added or improved upon as internal and external feedback is gathered. This includes how event data can be collected, analyzed, and distributed, as improvements are often included with each new release of DHIS2, allowing the system to become more powerful and user-friendly over time. The vision of the development team is to have the individual data model integrate seamlessly with the aggregate data model, but a lot of work remains to make this vision a reality. These enhancements are heavily guided by the larger DHIS2 community. How to contribute to and follow along with these processes will be described towards the end of the online academy. There are many key features of the tracker module. These features allow us to administer all required metadata related to individual based data collection programs. We can register an entity into a tracker program, and we can create relationships between entities, between programs. For example, a mother to child relationship can be defined in the system. We can also ensure the location of service provision is tracked. When considering how we review our data, we can view the data for specific individual, but we can also aggregate all of the data to produce aggregated reports. This allows us to make links between individual cases and aggregate information in the system. Individuals can be enrolled into longitudinal and chronic programs, and within these programs, we can schedule visits, set up automated reminders, and track missed appointments. All of these features lead to an improved retention of individuals in these long-term programs. Take note, this feature set is unique to tracker programs, as you are following someone through a set of services. Tracker and event programs are completely customizable and can be made to fit a variety of requirements and workflows based on their context. Thinking back to the HIV example we presented previously, this workflow could be modified to fit the needs of the location it is being implemented in. And with the increased use of mobile phones and tablets, we can use them to collect data via the Android Capture app which can be used both online and offline. We will be going through a number of these features as they relate to event programs throughout this course. We will continue with discussing the data capture apps in the next section whenever you are ready.